Love chapter 8. This is the last one um, prescribed. People aren't toys or fantasy. I'm not using any notes for any of this. I just wanted to give you the thoughts. But people are not toys or fantasy characters. Now, I remember somebody who liked some girl and they were talking to me about this person and they went as far as talking about them getting married and having kids and I'm thinking to myself, you could say, does the girl even know you exist? But the girl did know the person existed, but the girl wasn't interested in the person. This is not a joke, but you see it and you've seen women on TV shows. They just want to marry the person, find that little house, go live in that house for the rest of their lives and that's it. That's her concept. And she wants him to just be, she wants to be a, a housewife and him going to and from work and stuff like that and coming home and baking him dinner and stuff like that, you know. But he's, he's a real person. He can't be, she just turned him into a character in her fantasy of love. Same thing with the guy. Well, I just want a wife that looks beautiful that I can hold and bring and show off to work. She's not, women are not toys. Men are not toys. That's why you see girls who are immature. They marry, they, they not marry, they start dating the guy and they start changing his clothes. Guys, you need to avoid women who do that. They start telling you what to wear. They start changing your hairstyle. I saw that on a TV show. The boy asked the girl out and she's just like, oh great, this is some years ago. And she was like, oh great, we gotta cut it, we gotta change her, we gotta change her hairstyle, change her clothes, and you gotta meet. I mean, he's like, are you kidding me? He was a character in what she thought love was. This is why things don't work out. People get married and stuff because the fantasy character in the mind never manifests because they didn't ask God to give them what they want, what they really desire. They didn't consult it with God what they want. She wants to be able to uh, knit on the holidays and stuff like that and stay home and bake cookies with, a, with all the kids. And he wants to ski and travel on the holidays. Uh, these are two different worlds. And you know, we're not talking about people in maturity who ask the Lord and you can do you can enjoy both. That's something totally different. Don't try to oversimplify what I'm saying. What I'm talking about is somebody who is not compatible spiritually with this person. Well, that's you know, some would say say or unsay, but he really likes to go skiing and traveling on the holidays, and she wants to stay home and have a bunch of kids. You know, and so He's built the fantasy of her traveling, didn't ask God. She's built the, fa the fantasy of him, and they're just characters. That's why you see a lot of motion pictures and stuff like that. You know, I, you know, they, they just want the person doing what they want to do. It's total selfishness. But guys, people aren't toys. Women, your husbands aren't toys. These are real, actual, eternal beings that have dreams and aspirations and feelings. Men, your wives and children aren't toys. Parents, your kids are not toys. They're not toys to, for you to do what you want. Oh, I'm the parent. I want him to make good money, so I'm going to force him to do all this stuff. That No. That's not, first of all, children are inheritors of the Lord, and the fruit of the room is his reward. And ultimately, we're all becomes all the Christians, they become the children and sons of God. And But, but you got parents who are, you know, the child is just a cog in their fantasy, a character in their drama of life. Just like the girl. That's why people get mad. Why? Because they, instead of getting with God and learning how to love the person like Christ loved the church, and instead of asking God to send you someone who loves you the way you love, instead of asking God how to, you know, to help you be a proper friend and things like that, instead of asking God all this stuff, they just start expecting this other person to do what's just in their head. So there's some people, if you ask God, God said, that's a stupid idea, and God will stop you from doing it. But you, that's what you thought love was, because you saw it on like every other love TV show on that streaming service you like to watch. But that's not love, you know? You know, but you can't... I'm thinking, I don't want to say the service, because there's, I, I, I like, there's a streaming service I like watching. <laughs> but anyways, you cannot, you know... Treat people like, wasn't it? That's bad politicians do that too. They're just people are just little things and their little idea of what society is. That's why, that's why I don't play with socialism or communism or any of those people who like or play with it. It's not a joke because, well, that's why I don't like correction. I just, uh, not the people who like and play with it. I don't like socialism or communism because in those worlds, people are just, you know, like Hitler, they're just part of the machine to project what they want. See? Just like love. The, the girl, the dude, when the dude stops performing according to her fantasy, 
they break up. But he could really be try he could really be trying, but that's not in his DNA, his spiritual DNA to act like that. If you need someone to come home and kiss you every time they come home from work, girls or guys, you need to get with God to get someone like that. You don't take someone, and people actually do it, and they superimpose. You can't put a round peg into, you can't put a square peg into a round hole, as they like to say in America. You can't superimpose your fantasy on somebody else. That's a real human being with dreams and aspirations. If the boy... The, if the husband wants to wants to go, you know, and study abroad for a year, and the girl, I saw a movie like that. The dude wanted to go somewhere for a while, and she's like, in her brain, she was like, I mean, they, obviously, according to the story, you know, they, they weren't together in the end. Why? Because all she wanted to do was him to be with her. She cared nothing about his dreams or aspirations. She just wanted him home with her, living in their parents' house. What type of nonsense is that? Same thing with the guy. You know, you know, he wants the girl, he wants his wife, you know, to, you know, to be home and console him after all those, you know, his long, hard day at court. You know, she comes home from her practice, he comes home from his practice, and she, he just wants her to, you know, you know, just console him, and they just sit by the fire, you know, and sip the Welch's sparkling grape juice, and just, or, or maybe if it's by the fire, it'd probably be more like hot chocolate, and just sit there and chat into the night. But she like writing screenplays at nighttime. So I mean, some of them so so that's he can't. You cannot superimpose and put people into your fantasies. That's why guys, there's another thing. That's this is also with friends. That's why you have to do the same thing with friends. You have to let people be who they are, and you have to ask God to send you the proper friends. If you want a friend to play basketball with you, basketball with you every weekend, you need to ask God for that particular person. You don't have a friend and try to get them to do it because friends walk in love, guys. Friends walk in love, too. Friends will submit and do what you want to do because they like you. They're your friends. They love you. But you can't But you can't superimpose your fantasy on somebody else, and a lot of people are doing that. Same thing with congregations. This works with anybody, teachers, anybody. You can't superimpose your fantasy on somebody else. People are not. People are not your, you know, they're not toys. They're not chess pieces on the thing for you to do and tell them what to do, you know. So make sure that you don't do that. So that ends. That concludes our love chapters. I like that. I call them love chapters. Fall, uh, falling in love with God first. Awakening love. Finding your type. Love is not fresh. New excitement. Goosebumps. Love is not lust or obsession. Uh, love is not sex arousal or, you know, affection. Love is not, you know, then, of course, immature versus mature. And people aren't toys or fantasy characters. I mean, that's one of the most important things. And that helps people understand. That's why a lot of marriages and a lot of relationships and friendships can be fixed too. Because if your friend, for instance, I remember a TV show I like watching. I gotta get off. I gotta get off. We gotta get off tonight. We gotta go ahead and stop y'all. But uh, the show, the people were fighting and one person was scared and didn't want to fight. And that one, the other friend, this, these are guys, you know, they were mad because the friend was scared and didn't want to fight. And that almost destroyed their relationship because he was scared and didn't want to fight when the other person's brawling with somebody. So they, he's mad at that person. But if that's not in that person's DNA to fight, if that's not in that person's character to fight, then you can't, you, he cannot superimpose and be mad at his friend who went, who went and hid while the people were fighting. The person just didn't want to fight. There's some people, so you can't do that with your friends. So that's, that's the same thing. He superimposed it. That's another example. He superimposed it. I'm, you know, yeah, I'll leave it at that. So you can't do that because that's not in his friends. So you have to know who your friends are. And if you like a friend who's going to run to you with battle, then you need to ask God for some friends to run with you to battle. But if you also have a friend who is not a brawler, you can't be mad at them and be upset that they're not a brawler. So I love you, Libby.